everybody welcome back to the channel I ain't had your video out in over a week well that's because it's hard to do solar and off-grid content when it's cloudy and rainy we've had seven inches of rain in the last few days and that does not promote check and charge controllers solar panels and batteries and things like that but that does give me an opportunity for a different kind of testing when it rains cats and dogs and thunderstorms two inches in 20 minutes uh, that lets you test other things on batteries such as this humsi ink or hum sink, however the pronunciation is on that. Uh, IP67 waterproof rated, so I've left it out in the weather for over a week. Uh, today's the first day I've gotten some sun that just came out a few minutes ago. So everything is drying up, so I figured what better opportunity than now to check this battery and see if it's got any moisture inside. So I'm gonna run inside, kill the breaker that feeds this uh, this section right here. This is my outdoor test rig on this on the RV. So I'm gonna kill the breaker, disconnect the battery, and I'm gonna haul it up to the test lab or the power shed and uh, check it out. Those NOCO battery boxes are not waterproof, by the way. So this battery that's in here has already been cut into. So I had to make sure this box was sealed. So just so you know, if you're planning on using one of these NOCO Group 24 boxes, it'll leak water around these vents and stuff at the top. You may want to seal the tops like I did, if not, you'll come out and find your battery sitting in about six inches of water. So yeah, haul it up in the woods if I can make it. I've uh, been stuck a few times going back and forth out to the, in the woods to the powerhouse, but I'll do my best to get us up there in one piece. Now, of course, you wouldn't want to leave your battery out in the weather like I did. This is just for, for testing to see, like in case you accidentally left it out, would it survive no problem at all, things like that. So you can see where it's out in the weather, the label's starting to come off, the serial number, data tag on the sides coming off from being in the rain. So, uh, you know, long term, your sticker's going to come off. Don't do that. Put it in a battery box, but I'm doing it to check the IP67 waterproof rating. We're going to check the sales, the build quality, BMS, things like that. And the low temp charge protection cutoff. They're claiming 32, the charge protection enables, which would stop charging. And then charging resumes at 41 degrees. So I'm going to test all this today. This is a group 24 size format, by the way, if I didn't mention that already. So, you know, in between a mini and a group 31, it uh, comes with two different lengths of terminal bolts. So I get it dried off right here. I'll crack it right open. One last look at it, crack a lid, check it out. All right, most of the way cracked open as always. I'll finish taking the lid off, we'll look at it together. So I think it should come right off now. There we go. Wow, that's a big old hog wire in there. Yeah, that's a big wire. <laughs> That's a number four on a 100 amp hour battery. That's probably, yeah, that's the biggest one I've seen on a 100 amp hour battery. So, wow, that's looking good to start with. It's, yeah, it looks robust. I see a metal case down the side of the cells and compression. No brand information on the BMS, any data on it. I'll check underneath it in a minute. It's got this nice metal casing down the side, similar to another battery I've worked with in the past. Uh, so let me disconnect these terminals right here. I'll pull the cell pack out, start the testing. So it's got a number four, 200 degree silicone jacketed positive, three number tens hydraulically crimped on the negative side. So nice large wires on this one. I do see one thing that may not be my favorite. You see the leads for the positive and negative electrode terminals right there against the case. Yeah, they're touching the case. So if you took an impact right here, on the side, it could bend that, but I'm gonna look at that a little closer when I get down into the battery. Now, I do not see any moisture infiltration or water in the battery, which is a good thing. So I looked all down in the case, nothing in there. It's got a nice thick polyurethane seal on the battery, complete all the way around. So yeah, no water infiltration, so we can go ahead. Unless I find something down underneath the cells, we can go ahead and mark the IP67 as a check. So yes, it is waterproof. There it is coming out of the case. As you can see, the cells are in metal compression. The BMS has metal guards over top of it too. Uh, you know, it's like a battle tank so far. So first we'll look at the cells on this unit. I'll go over the BMS in just a second. We got our NTC thermal probe right there, thermal sensor sitting in the center of the cell pack, which is nice. These cells right here are EVE cells, which are good cells. And they are the LF100LA cell. So you can see right here, let me get you a close-up shot. They are 320 watt hours at 3.2 volts per cell. So they're 100 amp hour cells from EVE. Very nice, very nice assembly. Very nice bus bars, very nice welds. Uh, bolted balance lead connections. 
very, very nice. No moisture in here, so our IP67 rating stands, which is good to see. Love these with this metal compression in the side, especially this one with the metal plate on top of the BMS to protect it too. Saw in the in the box a minute ago, the plastic case, and I talked about these bus bars, uh, the terminal connections right here where they were kind of near the case. But I look at it from the side, you can see right there, the metal plate on the side would protect those. So another thing I, I see now that this out of the case, you sell the epoxy, they throw the epoxy to the positive and negative connection. So if it did get bumped in the side of that case, look at all the epoxy. They've got this section right here just glued down straight to the prismatic cell. So if it did take a bump, it's not gonna move. That is some thick, serious industrial epoxy right there. So take a look at the build quality on it. It's got one layer of fish paper between each cell. I don't see any bulging on the cells. You can tell these are brand new cells. Compression with tie band, super thick tie band on this one, pulling it down and it is tight. It got these metal plates on the side, holding everything together, squeezing it, which is good. We've got epoxy board on the top, up from the BMS to the cells, epoxy board on the side, separating it from the metal so no rubbing is gonna take place. So yeah, so far so good. Uh, so now, well, let me go ahead and mark this right here. I'm going to give a check to the cells and build quality because it is built like a tank. I like it now that I saw that epoxy on the positive and negative bus bar connections on the cells right there. Take a quick look at this BMS from the side view right here. You can see right there those white wires and that white little bimetallic switch right there. That's our high temp thermal protection for the BMS. This should be our cell protection here. I'm going to check that too, but... So we got high temp protection on the BMS itself from overheat condition, decently thick heat sinks. I said no data tags on the BMS. I can only go by what uh, the manufacturer is claiming. And this BMS is ready for 100 amp continuous discharge current. So we'll have to just go with that for now. So now let's see, uh, you know, the low temp works on it. So today's low temp test, going to use ice water dead on 32 degrees. See how sensitive this probe is, this NTC sensor. So I will submerge it in ice water at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero Celsius. We'll watch the charger. I'll give you a time off the viewfinder whenever it cuts out or if it does cut out. All right, that's been one minute. Let me make sure the probe is all the way in the water. Just double check, make sure everything's like it's supposed to be. And I'll give it another minute, see what happens. Well, ice water's not doing it. That's three minutes in the ice water. So that should have cut it off because they're claiming 32 degree right here. Charging low temp protection off at 32, on at 41. So uh, hmm, that didn't work. Try something colder. Got a colder than ice, ice pack, salt base. So well below 32 degrees. So I will place it in the salt based ice pack, which is below 32. Same thing, I'll count the time, see if it cuts off it in the 20s. All right, that's two more minutes uh, in the colder than ice ice pack, nothing. So that low temp protection does not cut off at 32 degrees or anywhere near it. I can use some compressed gases uh, to make it trigger down in below zero degrees Fahrenheit, but uh, what's the point of that? So uh, it fails the low temp cutoff portion of the test. I'll still check for high temp though. High temp test on the cells. Watch the charger right there. I'll give it a rip and see how long it takes. Twenty seconds. Perfect. It should come back on any minute now. Put it right against that cold right there. That should bring us right back to charging. There we go. High temp works. Works very good. Low temp does not. I'll give the low temp one more try. I'm gonna walk away for about five or 10 minutes to make sure there's not a five minute delay programmed in this BMS. I have seen longer delays than a minute or so, but I like to see them drop out within 20 or 30 seconds when they detect a sub zero degree Celsius or 32 degree Fahrenheit reading on their sensor. So I'll be back in about five or 10 minutes and I'll leave it charging, leave the camera rolling, and see what happens. 10 minutes have elapsed and we're still charging. So uh, yeah, definitely 100% certainty the low temp protection does not trigger at 32. So I have to mark this one out, unfortunately. Uh, no, no check mark there, that's a big X. So that does not work, just so you know. So the hum sink or hum sink battery 
at time of filming is 179.99 so it's a good value uh, if you don't need low temp protection so i wish that they would just you know wouldn't even put that in the ad if it's not functional that way we would just assume that it does not have low temp protection and take the precautions needed for that so just like this battery now that i know that it does not have functioning 32 degree fahrenheit low temp protection i'll be removing it off the rv tongue into a conditioned space because it could be damaged over the winter so if you're in a cold climate that reaches freezing and this battery's gonna be outside not the battery for you but if you can keep it above freezing uh yeah it's a quality built battery it looks good uh, load testing is coming up, capacity testing, all that. As you can see, it was a low state of charge. I'm truly off grid. If I don't have lots of sun and have spare energy to charge these batteries, tests like that have to wait. But I wanted to check this battery out. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you next time.